ETC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 14. In this lesson, we're going to create a blend. It's a new feature we haven't covered much previously. And we're going to do a simple cap. And you can make this one a little more complicated than what I show here. Uh, basically, what I want to do is I want to just use the same first feature. So I'm going to delete these like so. And the first feature itself, anyway, is very simple. It's just a nine inch and uh, by a quarter inch thick plate. So first of all, let's go up to our model tab, go to shapes, click on blend. And open up the sections tab and we're going to go to define. If you right mouse button, you can do the same thing. Click on the face here, sketch, and we're going to go in and turn on the options, sketcher, and we're going to have show the grid and snap to the grid selected on. I already did this previously. If you change the type of uh, grid that's going to be shown, like if we go polar right here, click OK, and click No, because you don't want that to be the default. And then in the Sketch tab, go to Display, Set Up Display, see everything's on for the grid, and then click on Grid. And now we have to select Polar, and OK, Repaint, and let's go in and change this to no hidden line. All right. So what we want to do is we want to have some construction center lines, first of all. So we're going to put a couple of them at 30 degrees, like so. And we then have to follow the rules of a blend. And the blend says you have to have the same equal amount of segments, unless you're blending it to a point. So the first thing we did is put in construction center lines, and you can change the dimensioning scheme. If you want the 30 degree angle, you can add them over here, and these will go away because they're weak dimensions. Now, let's click on, uh, actually, let's go up here. You can only get, you know, going to be arc center ends, center, and you're going to create three of these center, beginning, and end, center, beginning middle mouse button. You'll see this is the starting point. So a couple rules. You have to have equal amount of segments in each section. You must have or you should know where your start point is because if it's different on each section you will get a twisted feature. If that's what you want that's fine. So we're going to finish this sketch and unlike other features here you're going to actually add another one. So section number two is required. You got to have two of them to create the blend. And this is the distance in between. We can change it here, or we can change it later. I'm not paying too much attention to dimensions right now. Sketch. You can see the other sketch that we just completed is grayed out. So again, we want to follow the same procedures we did before. Put in a couple of construction center lines. And then, in this case, we're going to just use a straight line section. And if we do it correctly, we should only have one dimension. And the dimension you really want is on just one side. You pick the side you want the dimension. Now, in this case here, it did not lock into the center. If yours does, you should come back with only one section and nothing else. So something's a little bit different about mine. It didn't lock in correctly because all these are supposed to be equal. In fact, I can go up and I can say I want this equal to this, and I want this equal to this, like so. And if you want to change this, I'm not sure what it is in the book. I'll just change it to 3.5. So we're going to come out of that section. Now, if we really wanted to, and the book it only has you do two, we could insert a third one. And again, we have to follow the same procedure as before. We want our construction center line. And 
Let's go back to the arc, center arc, and do something a little bit different. Center arc, center arc, and the third one. Middle mouse button. And right mouse button, OK. And then we'll go into our shade so we can see our default here, or our view preview. So you can actually pull on this whichever section is active at that time. Let's see if anything else. You can change the dimensions. It doesn't look like it's going to allow me to pull on the. Yeah, it did. Okay. Just have to get a little bit more sensitive here. So you can pull on the size. And middle mouse button finish. So you can make yours an interesting shape. I get a little bored with seeing ones turned into me that are the exact same thing as I have there. But it's up to you <clears throat> on how complicated or unique you want to make it. Uh, last part here is let's add a hole. And I'm going to put it on the flange portion here. And the main thing here is this is going to be a diameter hole. And it's reference, the primary reference here is going to be the axis and then hold down your control key and pick either the vertical or the horizontal to measure from the angle for the angle. And the angle is going to be zero for us. And we want to make the hole a little bit smaller so it doesn't go too far into the edge here, towards the edge, like so. Middle mouse button, right mouse button, and let's go in and pattern it. And we will use an axis padded pattern, like so. And middle mouse button. And let's rotate the part a little bit. Let's click on the shell tool and shell it out. And since there's an entity here, these circles, it's going to add or leave materials around them the same thickness as everything else that's in there. So when we complete it, if we want this to be having a little bit of a ledge there, a little bit of a, um, a, a look like uh, that it's not, that's not going to be shelled around this portion, if we want to change that, we take the shell and we just move it up, and that little boss will disappear. As part of this project, you're all supposed, supposed you're supposed to do a, a drawing and a detailed drawing of it. And again, if you change the shape, your drawing is going to be a little different than what's shown in the in the PDF. But at the bottom, at the you'll see that we do want a complete detailed drawing of it. This completes lesson 14.